Howdy folks, welcome back to the World of Tanks replay contest with the Mighty Jingles. Once again, still going through the submissions, and we're down to less than a thousand now. And uh, I thought I'd show you some of the games that, uh, that pricked my interest, this being one of them. For a couple of reasons, um, it was a good game. And secondly, it's a VK3001P. This is Quadra in his VK3001P, which is one of those tanks that you almost never ever see people submitting replays of, because it's just not very good. <laughs> oh, oh, but Jingles, you just don't know how to drive a 3001P, say both of the VK3001P admirers. Yeah, nobody knows how to drive a VK3001P, it's a big bag of fail. Well, that's a bit harsh. It's it, fully upgraded, it isn't terrible. Unfortunately, our team are. We have at least two douchebags on the team. Our Tiger P has just destroyed our Cromwell. Don't know what the Cromwell did to provoke it, but hey, there you go. Now, what you're about to see here is something that very, very rarely happens with the 3001P. And that's down to the horrible selection of guns this thing has. The top gun on this tank is the 88mm L56, which was an absolutely legendary gun in real life. Deadly accurate. It's the gun the Tiger used. But in this game, not so much. So here's a very, very rare sight. Yep, he actually hit <laughs> a target at long range with his first shot. Which is what this gun did in real life. In this game, not so much. Yep, nothing. There we go, bouncing off a Panzer 4S. Totally missing an IS. There he is, aiming at centre of mass. Goes nowhere, completely misses the tank. How many shots has he fired? Only one of them's actually hit. Oh, that one hit. Don't worry, I'm sure that won't continue. Aims at centre of mass, shot goes wide and takes the tracks off. That's this gun for you, I'm afraid, and it's one of the reasons why the 3001P just isn't very good. It's also one of the worst grinds in the game. Absolutely horrific grind. You have to play this thing as mostly stock, right all the way up. I know this sounds like a bit of a contradiction in terms, but it, it, it basically has stock performance all the way up until you unlock the last upgrade. The last upgrade being the 88mm gun. It's slow, it's sluggish, its guns are underwhelming until you've finally upgraded it all the way and then it goes from being absolutely awful to just mediocre. The thing is fast in a straight line it, but it's the size of a... in fact it's bigger than a Tiger. I don't know where they got off calling this thing a medium tank. It has paper for armour, mediocre gun selection. So seeing somebody do well in one of these things is always a pleasure. Friendly Pershing down there in a bit of trouble with a Type 59. Flank shots on a Type 59, that's what we like. Notice, by the way, this is a Tier 8 game using a Tier 6 medium tank. And he's done a thousand damage. Nailed himself two tanks. Of course, he should have killed more than this. If that gun wasn't completely useless. You can see these shots are going nowhere near where he's aiming. And this was the Tiger's gun. <laughs> oh, really? Well, he knows there's a scumbag up there. You can see this thing is fast in a straight line. He's doing 64 kph there going down that hill. It's just one of those guns. It's nowhere near as good as it should be. 
The accuracy isn't great. The aiming time is not good. The alpha damage is not good. The penetration is pretty bad. And it's the best gun available on the tank. And yet, Quadra is really, really making it work. Four kills. And there's the aiming time. It's just horrible. Now, we've got an enemy tank stuck in the river down there, so... Ha ha. <laughs> Aha. Two 3,000 MPs enter. Only one will leave. The one thing the 3,000 MP is very, very good at is killing other 3,001 MPs. Because neither of them have the armour to bounce shots from their own gun. as you're going to see. You know, he's done bloody well here. Four kills. Two thousand damage. He's capping. On that shot. Yeah. That one looked like it at the front of the turret, but I can't see any holes there. He's been hit a couple of times, it's difficult to say where the other one went. Kill number five. The T-29 moving up now. He's going to use the wreck of this IS as cover. He knows the T-29 is going to pop out here. He has to, to try to reset the cap. Here he comes. Taking his tracks. Oh, you can see the T-29 looking at him. Gets himself tucked down behind the turret of that IS. T-29's fired. Take your shot. Back in the cover. Judge the reload of that gun. It's difficult to tell from here whether or not the T-29 is using the 90mm or the 105. Got him. I think that guy in the river has drowned himself, actually. That's, there's a reason why they call this map Derpenberg. All they have left is a lurver. And he is on the other side of the river. So Quadra is repositioning, take advantage of all available cover. From the last spotted location of that lurver, they have an IS. Ah, there we go, he's been spotted. T-34, nails him. And how about that for a win? Every enemy tank destroyed, top gun, and capped to 100%. Perfect game. Well played. How about that for a result? One of the most underwhelming tier 6 medium tanks in the game, in a tier 8 battle. Mastery badge, top gun, invader, a whole bunch of... I mean, just look at that. 59,000 credits, 4,200 XP. Not bad. Not bad at all. The most XP and the most damage done in a tier 6 medium in a tier 10 match. And... I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> that is not the L56. 24 shots fired, 19 of them hit. 17 of them penetrated. What is going on? Never does that when I'm driving it. Maybe I'm just not driving it properly. But Quadra certainly is. So, yeah, there you go. Very well played. Well done. Nice to see a tank that everybody, myself included, just writes off as useless. Nice to see it doing well in the hands of somebody... Who knows what to do with it? Speaking of good games, here's DOP, or DOP. And he's driving his Cromwell. Again, it's not a top tier game. He's a tier 6 medium tank in a tier 7 match. Um, I don't recognise that language. And I don't recognise that flag. I think it's Romanian. I'll have to check that. Otherwise, you know, 70% of the comments of this video are going to be jingles. That's the Croatian flag. <laughs> so yeah, I'll confirm that. 
later on. But yeah, here we go. Check this out. He has a stock of APCR ammo, but he's not using it. And that 3001H is just about to get himself into serious trouble. In fact, he's doomed. You can angle your armour all you like, mate. Your 50mm isn't going to save you. Because now you're dead. Next target, 3001D. Another tier 6 medium. And again. Just as dead as his friend. And now here, enemy tier 7 heavy. One of the most valuable and strongest tanks. Stuck in the open without any friends. And he's about to have a very, very bad day. And then, disaster strikes. Dop. Just, you know, how can, how can he fail now? The IS has just fired. And what the hell? Dop just lagged out. And when he gets back in the game, he's stuck with his tracks blown off right in front of all these enemy tanks. <sighs> now there was a bit of good luck and a bit of bad luck there. The bad luck obviously was the lag spike. The good luck was the fact that that IS fired and only blew his tracks off. Well, look at this T-3485. Get out of the way. You want to get inside the lee of this hill to stop the T Type T-34 and the Panzer 3 4 shooting at him. And, uh, idiot teammate. So he goes for the Panzer 3 4 because it's the easier kill and the Type T-34 is going after easier kills himself and has a lousy gun depression so as long as he stays below him he's reasonably safe. 2,339 damage done so far has not yet used any premium ammo. Now they got a KV-1S on the other team, again another tier 6 in the tier 7 game who's doing pretty well. We've got this side of the map, the other side of the map is definitely enemy territory. Oop, Tiger P. Very, very long range, but from the side, we should probably be taking these shots. He's almost certainly moved by now. You notice how he holds down his right mouse button to keep the gun pointing in the same direction. Then switches his view and pans his camera around to keep an eye on what's going on, because you can see a KV-1S and a Churchill spotted in front of him. He's trying to keep an eye on where they are. There's that KV-1S. He's the guy we need to kill. Now, we're getting shot at, but it's only a Stuart. And our armour can handle fire from a Stuart. There's a Stuart in the bushes on that ridge up there. He's the guy who's spotting us. That was almost certainly a penetrating hit, and if that Churchill hasn't moved, those probably are too. There's the Stuart. You see him? That looked like a hit from the Churchill, so back off. Got a comet there getting outplayed by the Stuart. <laughs> what the hell? And there's a Stug. This guy's a one shot kill as long as this shot hits, and it does. M6, side shots, yes please. Two more of those, this guy's gone. Come on, come on, have him. Ah, uh, bounced. There's another kill. Four kills. Three... Th ooh, three six of one age. Concentrating on something else. Still hasn't used a single round of APCR yet. There's the KV-1S. You need to kill this guy. Oh, didn't give it nearly enough lead. Oh, Mr. Churchill. Now the Comet at tier 7 can fit a Verkel stabiliser, but the Cromwell down here at tier 6 can't. 
And this tank, well, it doesn't badly need a vertical stabiliser, but it would be amazing if it could. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> that could have ended badly. But one thing that the Cromwell is better than the KV-1S at doing is taking those snapshots. And now the only thing left is that Tiger P. He asks the team if he can get the last kill. Obviously he wants the Radley Walters medal. And, you know, you can ask. Personally, I don't think anybody should be given awards like that. I think it's something you should have to earn. I've come close a couple of times and and had those last kills, I'm not going to say taken by other friendly tanks, because if you can get the kill, get the kill. But on this occasion, the team are quite happy to let him take the award. So that was a nice little bit of sportsmanship from the rest of the team as well, recognising a well-played tank uh, and, and allowing him to take the credit. And there's the results screen. And um, before we actually look at the results, news just in. The flag on the side of his tank was actually the Slovakian flag. So my apologies not just to Slovakia <laughs> for not knowing what your flag looked like, but also to Romania for thinking that that's what your flag looked like. Um, so I've managed to offend two Eastern European countries with one comment. Fantastic. I just lost 40,000 subscribers <laughs> from Eastern Europe. Me and my big mouth. Uh, so, yes, anyway, um, I do apologise, Slovakia, I keep, you see, for the majority of my life, the Czech Republic and Slovakia were Czechoslovakia, so I, I still, even though I know it's wrong, I still think of Czechoslovakia as being a country, even though it isn't, and it hasn't been for years, um, so, yeah, sorry about that, what can I say, I'm old and I'm stupid, but anyway, uh, Dops game, look at that. 70,000 credits, nearly 3,000 XP, and no, that's not doubled, that's not the first game he's won today in his Cromwell, so hell's bells, that's a good game, that is a hell of a good game, look at the scores, by far did the most damage of anybody on either team, walked away with a colossal amount of base XP, I mean the base XP that he got before any modifiers were applied is a good result <laughs> for people, you know, with all the modifiers applied, you know, for winning, the 1.5 times XP bonus for winning, etc, etc. So, the, the, wow, what can you say? Look at that. He was busy the entire game. 48 shots fired, 39 direct hits, 36 penetrations. Didn't need to use a single round of premium ammo because he just knew where to fire. Um, can't, really can't argue with a result like that. You know, it's not like watching me derp around in my comments, spamming APCR at everything. Yeah, you know, this guy actually knows how to drive the tank. So well done, Dop. Uh, hell of a game. Well, while we're on the subject of punching above your weight, here is, um... You know, I'm just going to call him Dave, because I can't pronounce that name. Cherny and Jo? I don't know. So, alright, Dave? How you doing? He's here in his tier 7 IS Russian heavy tank. And he's on a tier 8 game on Sacred Valley, one of the new maps. And this SU-152 is about to discover, while you never want to be the first tank spotted <laughs> on this map, unless you've got some serious cover in front of you. Because on this map, there is very, very little in the way of actual cover. There's plenty of concealment but you can shoot through concealment. And on this map, as that tiger also discovered, people can shoot you from the other end of the bloody map. I have problems on this map because I really haven't played it that much. There's a couple of spots I'm familiar with, but on the whole I'm definitely not an expert at playing on this map yet. Now is he going to get shot in that lover? Maybe, maybe not. Somebody's getting shot on that lever. So, yeah, it looks like the northern end of the map is mostly under control. But Dave has spotted a problem 
over on the southern end of the map by the monastery on the hill. And since nobody else appears to want to do anything about it, and the IS is a pretty mobile tank. Yeah, I mean, there are two Russian heavy tank lines, one of them being slow and heavily armoured. Uh, we're talking here the KV-3, the KV-4, etc., etc. And the other being, well, not lightly armoured, but more mobile, like the IS, for example, or the IS-3. So he heads back to see what he can do about defending this flank. There's a T-34 there who is either botting, AFK, or just no use to us alive. Which doesn't really matter. Spots a target of opportunity here. Exceptionally long range. WZ-131, who he doesn't have a shot at and who is burning to death anyway. So he ignores the distraction. He knows there's a Black Prince down there on the right-hand side of the valley, but there's a very, very juicy target just popped up here. FCM 50T, tier 8 French heavy premium tank with a very, very nasty 90mm gun. And if he can do some damage to this fella, it will be very, very useful. And he's hit him twice. Is he going to get him a third time? He's going to need a bloody good damage roll to one shot him. And he doesn't get a good damage roll, so... Well, he was unlikely to kill this guy anyway. And the FCM driver does pretty much the only thing he can do in this situation, which is to get the hell out of Dodge. There's one thing the FCM 50T is very, very good at doing, is getting the hell out of Dodge. It's a very fast, heavy tank. Things are going from bad to worse up in the monastery, though. They've just lost the T-43. They've just lost the KV-5. Now all they have up there is a Hellcat. So Dave heads over to try to stem the flow of enemy tanks rushing around this side. The northwestern side of the map? No problem. Also, you might think. Uh, there's a Tiger, a T-29 and a Tiger P up there. So it's, it's pretty much all their tier 7 heavies. And that Hellcat is just getting pounded. He's got no effective shots on the T-29. It's pretty much only the turret of the T-29 showing, and unless you're shooting at the side, you really don't want to be shooting at the turrets of T-29s. There's a Black Prince up there. However, if he goes around the corner of this mountain, there is all of those nasty, nasty tank destroyers. And no, chasing after him would be a fool's game. Dave ain't no fool. He knows he's going to have plenty to shoot at around this side if he's just a little patient. And the game could still go either way. They're only losing by one tank. Tiger, flank shot, lovely. Over on the other side of the map, they've still got two tier 8s and a tier 7. Another good shot on the Tiger. Two tier 8s and a tier 7, who should be capable of dealing with that T-34. This is a very dodgy shot. And it, it actually bounced. That's unusual. Now here comes the T-29. Showing him his flank. Okay. You'd think, after that Tiger took two hits, the T-29 would know that Dave is here. But he keeps giving him his flank. Alright. Oh! That was a good damage roll. And we took his tracks off. And this guy is doomed. There's his first actual kill. Still a tiger around there somewhere. And where did that tiger P go? Black Prince is... Is he a target? Keeping an eye on what's going on in front of him. Oh, tiger P, tiger P, tiger P. Stop backing off. Need to get under the Tiger P's gun. There's the Tiger. Does he have a shot at the Tiger? Mm, not really, no. And his ammunition is starting to get very, very low. So he can't afford to be taking shots 
with this 122mm gun just to knock away cover in front of that tiger. So he puts some real estate between himself and those two enemy guns. And starts punishing. They've managed to actually lose everybody up there other than this Pershing. KV-3's come back because he's seen the threat to Dave here and he's landed two great hits there. One on the T-34, one on the Ferdinand. KV-3's come back to try to defend the cap. Why is that Tiger and Tiger P not pushing Dave's position here? You notice Dave only has two rounds of armor piercing ammunition left after that. After that, he's on premium. And he totally misses the Black Prince. Is he going to reload and kill him? He, he probably needs to kill him, but... And he's checking all around because he's paranoid about the Tiger and the Tiger P. But where are they? Kills the Black Prince. There's his second kill. He's done 4,000 damage, by the way, for those of you who aren't counting. Are they really trying to cap? They are. That's the Tiger and the Tiger P. Or it's at least one of them. KV-3 is coming back. Now this is actually a spot of luck, because you'd imagine, knowing that Dave was here, that Tiger P's gun would have been pointing this way. But it isn't. Perhaps he saw the KV-3 coming. I don't know. But now he's turning his gun away to point at the KV-3. And then back, and then forward, and then back, and then he misses. And of course, now that Dave's switched to premium ammunition, he starts bouncing. <laughs> And that one shot, that one bounce, well, you'll see what I mean later. KV-3 is burning to death. Come on. Kill number three. Now, that was Dave alone against five enemy tanks. Now there are four of them. Two of them tier eights. T-34 and a Ferdinand. He's hit both the T-34 and the Ferdinand. There's also a Tiger and an SU-12244. So, everybody left on the enemy team is at number 4 to 1, and they're all either the same tier or higher tier than him. So there's a potential Kolobanov's medal going, you know, up for grabs here. And looking at his ammunition loadout, potential Faden's medal as well. You get the Faden's Medal for killing the last tank on the enemy team with the last shell in your gun. And yeah, he's done 5,000 damage in a tier 7 heavy in a tier 8 game. But now he needs to have his head on a swivel stick because they could be coming at him from either direction. The SU-12244 hasn't been spotted the entire game. He could be anywhere. We know that, that, that no idea where that tiger went. The guy who was with the tiger P. He's still out there on about 50 health. Down this side, somewhere. But there's a 30 and a T-34. Probably coming from this side as well. And there's only three minutes of the game left. And Dave's down to six shots. That's all he's got left. Trying to cover a cap from both directions against four enemy tanks. And he doesn't know where any of them are. Yeah, I'd probably be feeling pretty tense at this point if I was in his position. Oh, somebody's trying to cap. It's that tiger. Kill number four. Now, SU-12244. Not particularly well armoured, but surprisingly bouncy from the front under the right circumstances, and has a very rapid firing gun. Now, he, no question about it, Dave got kind of lucky with those two shots. Right? He, they weren't fully aimed, and they both went in. He's going to take a hit here. 
and he takes a big one. Both of these guys are one-shot kills. He only has three rounds of ammunition left. There are three tanks that need killing. Premium ammo does not let him down there. He plants one right in the commander cupola of that T-34. Takes another hit from the SU-122, but calculated risk. He wasn't going to kill him unless he ammo racked him. Takes the hit. Makes sure that that shot doesn't miss. Finishes him off. He's got Top Gun. And there's the Ferdinand. And the Ferdinand has a very, very, very big gun. And can one-shot kill him. He is going to need a good damage roll. The third is fired. Come on, don't let me down. Take your time. 330 damage. You have got to be kidding me. This is a gun that is supposed to do 390 damage on average. And, oh no... He's got to ram the Ferdinand to win. But the Ferdinand's a very heavy and heavily armoured tank. And the IS-7... Uh, the IS? IS-7? <laughs> the IS is... It's fast, but it's not very heavy. And he's going to take a hit from this Ferdy. Oh, this could all be over very, very soon. There is only 25 seconds left on the clock. Or oh, this is going to be a draw. He's got to do it. He goes, the 30 hits him, takes his tracks off, doesn't kill him, repairs his tracks, charges, leaves him on 25 health. 10 seconds of the game left. The 30's desperately trying to get out of the way, he doesn't know he's out of ammunition. 2 seconds, 1 second, and it's a draw. Well, I, I, I don't really know what to say about that. That was just so tense and painful to watch by the end that one shot that he fired at the Tiger P when it was sitting in the cap circle that bounced ironically enough right after he'd switched to premium ammo because that was all he had left if that one shot had gone in he could have won this game not just with Top Gun and Sniper but with a Kolobanov's medal and a Fadin's medal denied by the RNG <laughs> Just, oh, horrible. Absolutely horrible. And you can't fault his performance. He's a tier 7 tank in a tier 8 game. And he walked out of there with 6,674 damage done. Six kills. Double the XP of anybody else on either team. If that had been a win rather than a draw, because a, a draw is a defeat for both teams, that would have been an 11,000 XP match if that had been his first win of the day in the IS. Just what a heartbreaker. But he certainly punched above his weight in that game. So, Dave, because I still don't know how to pronounce your name, <laughs> I'm giving you 2,500 gold, which will hopefully take some of the sting away from that result. Well played. It's just a shame you couldn't win it. So, less than a 1,000... Submissions still to look through for the replay contest. Uh, we've nailed two and a half thousand of them. Less than a thousand to go, which means that in about a week I will probably be in a position when I can start dishing out some tier 8 premium tanks to the various winners. Until then, folks, take care on that battlefield. I'll catch you next time.